Okay. Price is important, but not you're changing lives. You're, you're saving lives. Hey, ambitious dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Banhorn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. Whether you're just about to start your dental practice or looking to take your current practice to the next level, it all starts with building a good team. In dental school, you learned how to fill a cavity and spent thousands of hours studying dentistry. But I'm guessing you didn't have to take a course on how to build a great team, which is why I'm so excited to introduce today's guest, Alex Nottingham, CEO of All Star Dental Academy. For those of you who haven't heard of Alex, he is one of the experts when it comes to building a great team and has provided hundreds of dentists all across the world the training and resources to set your dental practice up for success. As I mentioned in the interview, Alex and I have been wanting to do this interview for over two years and I think it was definitely worth the wait. So here are just a few things you're going to learn. Why building a team is so important and the two to three things it takes to succeed the importance of coaching and why you need to make it a priority, Alex's business growth formula and how you can apply it to your practice, why not investing in employee training now can actually cost you thousands of dollars down the road, and a whole lot more. Hello, Ambitious Dentist. Today, I am so, so very excited to have someone on the podcast that we've literally been trying to make this happen for two and a half years, it feels like. Uh, you know, we would both have to reschedule for various different reasons. We've actually been friends for for quite a while. And I'm really, really excited to have my friend, Alex Nottingham, on the podcast with us today. So if you don't know who Alex is, Alex Nottingham is the CEO and founder of All Star Dental Academy. He has authored the dental practice game-changing book, Dental Practice Excellence, and co-wrote a best-selling book with Brian Tracy. So Alex lectures nationally and internationally to very prestigious dental organizations, and he's a really, really good speaker. I I always enjoy hearing him talk. Uh, He's a former Tony Robbins top coach and consultant. He's worked with companies from a million dollars to a hundred million dollars in revenue. His passion is a lot like everyone else that comes on this podcast. It's to help others create personal wealth and make a positive impact on the people around them. So Alex actually is, uh, no one, no one cringe when they hear this, but Alex received his Juris Doctor JD. So he, he, uh, he is uh, able to, uh, he's an attorney, I guess, is, if you'd say, but he, uh, from, he, he's a, a great person. So don't, let's not, hold, no one hold me being a CPA against me. No one hold him. him trust having me, a I'm, doctor, trust me, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's also got an MBA from Florida International University. So it's my pleasure to welcome my buddy Alex onto the, onto the program. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for having me on your show. And yeah, it's, it's certainly been a while. I, uh, I remember many, many years ago, masterminding um, uh, different ideas. Uh, uh, and and I'm sure a lot of your listeners know what a great guy you are. And um, I sometimes talk about, and we might cover this theme again, but I talk about the idea of going beyond just being a, a, a go-getter. And we always do want to be a go-getter. But I think nowadays is to do well and in today's economy and to be happy and to be successful is you got to be a go giver. And Jonathan is all about that. Um, so much free content, so much love and care to the dentist and to helping others in, in the dental community. So Jonathan, thank you for doing what you do. Thanks, man. So, uh, as, as always, we always try and start off with, you know, what got you into the dental industry? You have this really great business background working with Tony Robbins and, you know, being uh, you know, licensed to or to having a law degree effectively, and then having a master an MBA. What got you into the dental industry? So what what happened was, I my my goal was to be a Fortune 500 CEO. Uh, I love business. I was very good at it. Uh, in and what I when I what I decided to do is is to continue to get better at business. 
Um, so that was my trajectory. I wanted to be great there. When when I was a when I was very young, the reason that I kind of focus on that is my dad is a dentist, and I always admired my dad. He's my hero. And when I was little tadpole, he told me, "Don't be a dentist." He says dentistry is changing. It's not like it used to be. Insurance is taking over. You know, he was a fee for service uh, practitioner before he started taking insurance. He was very. He was a panky trained dentist, uh, AGD fellow. Um, we happen to be an AGD member benefit, uh, but he is a member fellow. So we kind of share that. And, uh, never got to be a fellowship, but he's a great dentist. He he. Um, perf- uh, the owners of Da Vinci Studio, the, the former owners, uh, their own mother was sent to him. Uh, and that's the extreme makeover lab. And so he's great. And, you know, it was, so, so that's the type of doctor he, he is. And I know a lot of great clinician or clinician out there is, and so he told me, don't do that. Go, go be good. Go do, uh, become a business person or a lawyer because I wish I was better at that. He made, he was able to make money, didn't do very well with investments, got taken advantage of all the time. Uh, which Dennis do, uh, and and so I did what he said. I, I I went to law school. I got my MBA. I started working for Tony Robbins, and and was on my way to to be a CEO for a Fortune 500 company. I like like you said, I got to uh, write a great book with Brian Tracy. I spoke on stage with Michael Gerber. But then while that was happening, my father's practice was in trouble, and he came to me and says, you know that it's basically going to go bankrupt soon. And I offered to help. And he's like, well, what do you know about dentistry? I don't really know much, but I, I care about you and I want to help you, dad. And he, so he gave me the shot. I fired his marketing company, took over the marketing, sent a lot of new business to him by, by just uh, revamping his marketing strategy, but it still wasn't growing. And so I, I had this idea of maybe I, at the time, my girlfriend, and my wife, was a Bloomingdale's, uh, trainer and and salesperson, and so I took her from Bloomingdale's, and I brought her into the office. Now, the office didn't like this because who is this girl coming from sales to you know in service to to do dentistry? Well, um, in a week she learned what she needed to learn, um, and within eighteen months we took that practice from one million to two point three million. We were able to convert phone calls, which was the key, and improve the patient experience. Um, and I know a lot of dentists that work with us. When you talk to Heather, you you see what I'm talking about. You know, any business with a Heather on it is going to do amazing. That's why All Stars doing well. It ain't me. It's her. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's very important. So that was a turnaround, and it was so rewarding to work with my dad to see him grow, to see him become who he wanted to be. You know, having people from all over the world fly in to to do work with him. Um, so it's very rewarding. My dad and I are still very close. He's he's since been retired. He's on to different specialties, and I'm I'm there protecting him for different things. He's always getting himself in trouble. Um, and I and I made this assumption that dentists would be like my dad. It was very naive. I didn't poll, but as I meet with hundreds of dentists a year personally and talk with them, they're very alike. I don't think them are as extreme as my dad, <laughs> as he's just he's such a good guy. But they all have the same situation. They're artists. They love what they do. They're not great at business. They acknowledge that. Um, staff is, is, and we'll talk about this, is, is stressful. Um, they just want to do dentistry, make a good living, go home and enjoy their life. You know, They're not looking to take over the world, whatever that might be. Um, and so that's kind of, that whole story is how we kind of got into the, the beginning of where All Star Dental Academy was born. And since then, we got to pick up a great head instructor, Larry Gazzardo, um, which is a t- top consultant speaker in dentistry. I've never heard anybody speak uh, uh, the content that, that this gentleman has. Tonight, we're doing a study club. We do study clubs every every month. We did an expert webinar with you, interviewed you recently. Um, so so he's great. And we're honored to be working with the AACD, AGD, and all the, some great organizations. So that's kind of a history of why I got into it and how All Star was formed. So you kind of use your dad's practice as the launching platform to realize, like, hey, there's a, there's a lot of it. You know, there's a lot of issues that right. many didn't face. Right, right. And so you went out and you fixed your dad's uh, issues that he had, and you know, over doubled the practice. So, tell me about you know, you said there was there was, there was a lot in there. You know, missed phone calls, improving the yeah. culture, and you know, improving the patient experience, and things like that. You know, 
whenever I talk to a lot of dentists, they'll 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 think that they have issues in those areas, but they they'll, they'll talk to to their staff and they'll try and get them to do better, and it just never seems to work. So is that kind of what All Star Dental Academy helps dentists do, or or can you so basically explain All Star Dental Academy for? Sure. Them. So. So I think dentists are aware of the external issues, right? Insurance companies, they're, they're aware of corporate dentistry, um, which is making a, which a lot of dentists are scared of. It's making a big, big push. And I just want for the record, I'm not saying corporate's good or bad. It just is a force of nature you have to be aware of. Um, and, and there's also other competition, you know, you'd rather buy a new iPhone than get a filling, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. so you have to compete. And I think, um, and this goes also into the dental space is that dentists are always looking a uh, word about their competition like their other com their other dentists but they're not the problem it's everyone else who wants to buy other things um but i but i think that um dentists are frustrated with with, with the staff inconsistency um that's the number one challenge uh that they that they face according to the ada reportedly very stressful um, and I think that dentists are not aware typically of the cost. And I think you're going to like this, Jonathan, being an accountant, um, is the, where it's really, they're getting, they're getting hurt because they think, well, uh, and my dad was the same way. If I buy this new equipment, a new intral camera, a new, um, uh, milling machine, um, if I change the look of my practice and get this, you know, double my square footage, um, that these almost aesthetic things, cause think about this, Dennis, our artists, that that will fix my practice. I'll get more patients. Like if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. If you get the best practice, they will come. It doesn't work that way. You dentists, uh, they're they're investing in marketing. Some aren't. You have to get the phone to ring through good marketing. But then what? And you go, well, I'm, well, I, I spend money on marketing. Why? And this is why so many marketing companies work with us. They're like, well, why don't I have new patients? Well, I'm making the phone ring. You're just not converting them. Well, you know, do you hear that in the background? Or that's okay. Just let me know. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> Uh, some some adjustments to our office space going on um so the 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 key thing is to realize what it's costing them okay so let's just give some analysis here for a phone call right um the ada okay average says the average new patient value for the first year is 642 dollars with me mm -hmm. okay uh and it will be a lot more if it's a specialist or restorative dentist, but you're saying $642. And the average office is getting like, I think it's, uh, let me see if I have the actual number so I don't misquote, do, 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 is getting 135 new patient opportunities per month, okay? Of those, only one third book appointments. This is the average that we see through call tracking, okay? So 87 aren't booking. So you take 87 times 642, you're at over $55,000 of missed revenue. And that, that's if you convert every call. There's actually one dentist who reported to me recently that worked with us that converted, um, the marketing company never seen this. They converted 111 calls out of 112 calls. Now that's crazy. Hmm. I don't guarantee that. I don't recommend that as a norm. But that was amazing. So, so you can get better at it. But let's just say, for example, instead of 87, you do... One per working day, you improve, meaning you handle insurance question better, or the phone or or what you charge for question, the price shopper question better. One call a day, sixteen times six hundred forty-two. If you check my math, I think that's about ten thousand dollars. So ten thousand dollars times twelve months is one hundred twenty thousand dollars. This incremental improvement can have an. Uh, a, a pretty big effect in your practice. And we'll talk about, I, I want to talk about after this with the, with the business growth formula, because you're all about formulas. And there, a, one of our coaches, Dana is a sweetie. She was telling me about this concept she heard called, I think it's like, you may have heard it before. Let me read this to you. I, I want to start incorporating this into my talks. I love it. It's a Japanese word. Uh, it's uh, Kaizen, Kaizen, or Kaizen, Kaizen. Yeah. Kaizen or Kaizen, which is, growth through incremental improvement. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that in a moment. But did you notice that 
that just improving phone skills, just one per day is 10,000 a month. Then what is the lifetime value of a client? You should know this, Jonathan. You teach this stuff. Yeah, uh, it it really depends on it depends on the the, the practice and you know right, well, those are the averages. You know, there's a lot of people that tout somewhere around ten thousand dollars as the lifetime value, uh, but you know if if you've got well, give 10, me the how many years? How many years is lifetime years? How well, many years of the patient's it, it, stay? It, it, yeah, it depends. It depends on the practice. It depends on the practice and the and, and the doctor and the demographics because we have a lot of. So yeah, I, I don't I don't like to give generalities because every time I do oh, that, oh, you sound like a lawyer here. Someone, someone calls in and says, "Well, mine's this much. Why is that so much more?" Well, let's just use easy math. Let's just say it's ten years for easy math. Mm -hmm. Let's say the average lifetime they stay with the practice. That's yeah. ten thousand dollars you missed that month is worth a hundred thousand dollars that month mm -hmm. in the lifetime of your business. So if you want to double your business in time, you 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 have to know about that effect, and then you can go to broken appointments. You know, I know a lot of dentists tell you they hate break those broken appointments. It's like stealing money from the practice because you made it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're getting uh, two broken appointments a week for a doctor, um, which is $500 an hour, eight hygiene appointments, if you have two hygienists per week, um, that's $100 an hour. If you add those up, you're at $7,200 a month just on broken appointments. And then you can carry that out. And then there's turnover costs, which you talk about too. Those add up. So, so the point is, also the fact, there's also the fact that 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 patient could be a referral base for other. That, that's right. You lose the referral exactly. And so, and so that's where I think what I want to demonstrate, which is so important, and is to create that awareness that oh my goodness, really, that that um the. Just silence those phones. <laughs> um, so people are listening and they're like, I want to call. Um, hold on one moment. There's a nice do not disturb button that now we're just us. <laughs> um, so it's to really appreciate that, that these simple things, these low hanging fruit, you know, we're always looking at big things we have to do, totally revamp our office, but just a little thing like answering the phone well. You know, there was an extreme makeover dentist that uh, a friend of mine, one of our advisors I interviewed, and he said, typically our front desk, which are named after uh, office equipment, we don't like to say front desk, but your front office or admin team, they're typically the least paid, he said, but they make him the most money. They know that. That right there is where you grow your practice, okay, is you take care of your team, you train your team, okay? Now, to kind of build on that Kaizen kind of concept is, is what I, I created this formula called the business growth formula, okay? And so there's only four ways you, you, you don't, there's the only way you make money. You have to have a lead, you have to have a source, marketing or insurance, you with me? That makes a phone ring. You have to convert the phone call. The patient has to show up, they have to accept treatment, and then refer, which we were talking about earlier. That's it. You know, you can say you have to collect, but we assume you can collect sure. and do those things. Yeah. So if you can improve each of those areas, Kaizen, uh, you know, each of those areas uh, incrementally, you can build your business. So for example, if you can improve each area by 5% net, you'll grow your business 40%. Sure. If you can improve each of those areas by 12% net, you doubled your business. So, so let's talk about that real quick. So as far as, you know, the, the growing of that actual, that incremental growth and the improvement inside of dental practices, so many docs seem to be talking to me about how, you know, I've been doing this and I've been doing this and I've been doing this and I've been talking to them about this and talking to them about this and trying to get them to do this and trying to get them to do that, yada, 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 yada. What is it that they're missing in that? Why is it that they can't get this? Why is it that they cannot influence that improvement? Or why is it that they're they're, they're right. failing at influencing? Right. That so 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 the, the the two things are well. First thing we have to recognize. I'm going to answer your question. Just want to mm -hmm. reiterate. The first thing is dentists have to recognize the problem. And mm -hmm. typically, they don't recognize the problem. And so, if we recognize the problem is. And, and the potential solution is that I have to do phone training and, and be great at service and the patient experience, that that is what will grow my practice. If we, if they, we all agree on that, we can move forward. 
That's why we did all that number work in the beginning to show, man, this is a, a lot of money. Um, so then the question, the next step is implementation. Implementation, getting things done. Dentists are not implementers. They don't know how to get things done. They get the idea. They know how to put a, a make a billion veneer, but how to get their team. And, and I've been doing this for, for my whole lifetime, and it's still hard to get people to do what you want them to do. So what you what you have to do is train. Train like the Fortune 500. And there's two things the Fortune 500 do. The first is onboarding, okay? And what that means is we want to get everybody up to speed very quickly within 30 days. And Heather, when she was at Bloomingdale, she would say, you know, and she was at Bloomingdale's, Kate Spade, Theory. Whenever she worked for one of those companies, they had a, a process right when you come in exactly how to train you and get you on board where you can be doing their process. Let me ask you, Jonathan, and I know you don't necessarily go into offices that often, but you're a bright guy. You work with a lot of dentists and you hear their complaints. How do you think that offices typically train a new person? Certainly uh, sit down here and answer the phone and just get, yeah. just do it. I mean, pick up, just pick up the phone. Um, and, you know, we call that trial by fire, or I had one office manager say, it's kind of like we throw the girl into the wolf wolf's den and hopefully she mm -hmm. can survive. But, you know, the Ritz Carlton will not allow somebody to touch the phone, I believe, without nine, 60 to 90 days of phone training. And now that you know what it costs to make a mistake on the phone, $642 each pop, you sure you want to put a new person on the phone right away without training them? Someone who is the, one of the lower paid people in the practice. But even that, you're going to have your team answer the phone with no training and you're going to hire somebody new and on their working interview or whatever it is or their first day of work, they're answering the phone. They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. How does that build your brand? How does that, forget even converting, you're going to put a terrible message to people of who you, what you stand for. So and now I get into branding and I talk about my MBA program. I have an also dental MBA program that we discussed before, but that, that's for a different topic. But that goes more into leadership and understanding what you're trying to create. Um, so onboarding is the first step. We know the Ritz-Carlton will do that very well. We know Starbucks, everybody's cross-trained. That's very, they're very good at that. The, the next step is comprehensive training. This is where you gain your competitive advantage, okay? This is where you're consistently training every week. Okay, the best companies are always training. They're always improving. Okay, even accounting firms you've worked with, they, they still train, believe it. You know, it's always oh, yeah. improving. You have to stay on top. Now, we know in dentistry, you have to do HIPAA stuff. You have to do OSHA stuff. Now, your insurance policy and your growth policy is, is you have to do, in my opinion, service-based stuff, uh, the patient experience stuff. Okay, so, so, so onboarding is very important. And that's it. Now, a couple things... Then you say, okay, well, I get that. The next things you have to do is what's the format? So I recommend a couple things. You want a structured format. You want some sort of process to teach you step-by-step -step how to do it. You want the ability to evaluate how you're doing, let's say phone calls. But we at Allstar do not believe in mystery calls. They're unethical. They're manipulative. Okay, they're gotcha calls. We don't believe in sales. We believe in, in service and we don't believe in scripts because you sound scripted. We believe in verbiage, okay? And there's got to be some form of accountability and, and tracking, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so what I recommend is All-Star happens to be, and there are other, you know, there are other clinical, we, we do non-clinical, um, more the, 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 the patient experience and phone skills, is online. Online is is. Um, the beginning level. We also have coaching, consulting, on-site visits, all that. But we believe you 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 have to have some sort of of consistent online training, because what happens when people go to seminars? They're great and they're fun, but how much do you learn when you come back? Uh, yeah, we we I had recently had a had a had a friend who had paid for his staff to go to one of these seminars, and it was one of those you can kind of pick your own adventure as as you got there. And he said, "I want you guys to go to this one." And the staff showed up 10 minutes late and mm -hmm. they, you know, Starbucks in hand. And, uh, the one that they wanted to take was already full. So they like skipped that session and they went to a different one that was already full for, that he didn't want them to go to as well. And then the next day they didn't even show up to the seminar. And so, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, you know, seminar is good for team building. We have a good time, but mm -hmm. you're not going to learn anything. You're going to forget very little when, or do nothing when you get back. When I speak, um, I, I kind of, you know, I'm saying this is great. We're talking, but you're not going to remember anything. 
you know, mm -hmm. but I'm glad you're having fun. I mean, my thing is I don't look at myself as a speaker. People say you speak well, that's not important to me. I'm a change maker. I want to make a difference. I want to uplift dentists that are like my dad, others, you know, beyond um, just the status quo. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things too, I want to, in terms of implementation, this could be with anything. This is to go back to the Kaizen, if I'm pronouncing it right, concept. I have a, I have the Arkansas version of, of that word. It's a, Kaizen is probably the Arkansas. Kaizen, 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 Kaizen. Kaizen, Kaizen, Kaizen. Kaizen uh, pronunciation Kaizen. of the Japanese word. Uh, somebody's got to let me know the exact way to pronounce that. So, so the, you know, when I went to, I, I, I graduated um, 4.0 GPA, summa cum laude, um, undergrad. I sound really smart. I barely got in to college. My SATs weren't good enough. So they put me in probation and they put me uh, in a study skills course, okay? But it was great because I learned how to study. And so while people were cramming, I was getting straight A's because I knew how to study. I wasn't smart than anybody. I just knew the process, the system. <laughs> and what that system was, and I put that in all-star, because I ended up becoming a study skills specialist and teaching others, is little by little, incremental improvement. All we recommend with All Star, with our program, is 20 minutes a week. And doctors I've been talking to, they love this concept. We love that we can just put on a video, it's five to 10 minutes, and just do a little bit every week, it's always there. That's the key, and that's with All Star, but also with your clinical training, and any training you're doing, do little by little. Because otherwise, uh, you're not gonna remember, and staff will start to resent you, because it's too much stuff. You want to train your team that we are going to train 20 minutes a week with customer service based training for the rest of our career. Okay. And you know what? When I saw this practice, you're going to still train with the new owner because this is the key to success. And when team is training and focused on customer service, guess what they're not doing? They don't have time as much time to do drama. They don't have much time to nitpick because all they're focused on is serving that patient and making a difference, not about what he or she is doing. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it feels like it's so missed in so many practices where, you know, that, that piece is just missed. People get so busy in the day to day of running a business and having the employees just do their jobs. And hopefully just, you know, a lot of people feel like they struggle just to have their employees just do their jobs. Right. And, and, and look, I hear a lot Dennis say to me, um, I wish my, my team would feel the same way I feel about the practice. And yes, you do end up getting lucky. Sometimes you get, you know, it'd be great to have all team members that felt the same level that take the work home with you, with them. And some do. And if you can get people like that, that's great. Um, so, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody has to have that same level, but they have to be a professional. And while they're working, they got to give it their best and their all. So you got to create a standard. They don't have to take it home with it, them like you, but you have to create the standard that, that, you know, when they're working, they're professional, they're giving it their best and you incentivize them based on how they train, how they go the extra mile with, with, with your, with the team. So with a dentist, the standard starts with you. What I find often is that the team, because Dennis has no protocol and no backbone, sorry guys and gals. Uh, uh, no backbone that they allow their team to become the dominant. You know, it's like the same thing with the wolf pack. If the, if the alpha leader doesn't lead, some other will stand up and start taking it. If the dentist, which is, which is the leader, the alpha of the pack does not lead, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be aggressive, but isn't assertive, doesn't have a vision that somebody else is going to provide the vision. And usually it's not what the dentist wants. Oh, yeah, I see it every day where I talk to the dentist and I say, well, basically the office manager runs the practice. I just do the dentistry. And, and yet they complain. The yeah. office manager runs it, but people aren't, aren't doing their work. I ask them to do something. They're not doing it. Um, they're not being nice to patients. We're not making enough money. We're not this. They're not doing the, the crown the way I want to do it. I ask them that, you know, it. And also creates issues with the staff because the it staff does. doesn't know who to listen to. Do I have to listen to the dentist or the office it, manager? Exactly. And my dad was afraid of his office manager. And he was afraid, until, you know, when I took over the practice and I walked in, they knew that it was funny when Heather was there. If I didn't come in for a week, she says, you got to come into this office because it's falling apart again. 
you know, and when I come in, they stop doing that because they know I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and I'm, and I think I'm nice. I'm very fair, you know, but I'm not there to be their friend. I'm there to be fair, balanced. I'm there to, I'm great coach. I, I give people feedback. I, I think they're great. I'm very po- all about positive reinforcement, you know, but they know that, you know, this is the standard. This is what you want to do. So what I challenge Dennis is to think about your standard. Think about what type of practice you want. And, you know, you, you got um, to gotta fight for it. You have to sometimes, uh, you have to bring people aside that are trouble, troublemakers or going against it and say, we're not, it's not going to be this way. You know, it's going to be like this. You want to, it's like uh, you can speak softly and carry a big stick. One of our presidents said that. Was that Roosevelt? One of them. I think so. Uh, um, was Teddy? I think so. Yeah, from the uh, because of the Rough Riders uh, piece. Uh, so, tell us about you. You were talking about all the the costs involved and missing those phone calls. And I know there's probably a lot of doctors out there that are like, you know, yeah, I get thirty to fifty new patients a month, and I feel like I'm really healthy with that. Um, and I feel like my my people are doing a good job of converting those phone calls. Explain how those phone calls get missed, or how not missed, but how those opportunities become missed opportunities well first of all when dennis say that i say let me see your call log what do you mean call log are you recording your phone calls no then how do you know my team told me did they and i think you and i were just discussing this on your on your webinar where you said um team will say that they did x and when you do the audit they're not even close Mm -hmm. so often they they give me some metric that the team told them that this is their case acceptance rate or whatever. You don't know. So I want them to show me their call log if they're recording phone calls and very few are not are, are recording. Well, why do you know phone calls? I don't know. How do you know your marketing's working? I don't know. You know, um, I pay somebody $4,000 a month to do my marketing and I'm assuming right. it's working. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you won't spend a few hundred dollars on training. So, cause you don't know that there's a problem. And, uh, so, so I think, I think that's, that's part of the, um, the, the situation is, um, being able to, 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 so go, I got off on a tangent. The initial question was yes. the in- initial question was, is of, of the people that, you know, they, they don't see that gap between the patients that oh, are okay. coming in and With the, the patients that are, that, that, that called in and never, never, right. never had so a chance to come in. First, you have to demonstrate that you're 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 tracking the stuff, and ninety percent aren't. So we can forget that question is is garbage because they're not even they they can't show anything. It's how I feel. I don't know. So then we listen. We got to listen to the phone calls and really really look at them. How are they? Are they getting appointments? But not just that. What type of new patient appointments are they doing? The six to nine dollar um, exam, X ray cleaning, everything, or um, are these restorative treatments? Are these ortho treatments? Are these bigger treatments? What is it? Um, what was the conversation? What's ultimately case acceptance? What's your broken appointment rate? Because there are systems out there that do a better job than we do in getting patients in, but their broken appointments go through the roof. Their net income goes down. So that doesn't make any sense. It looks good, but it but you're you're wasting time. And you're losing money. So what we, our process is you get a great experience that they come in, they show up for appointments. Okay. So it's also, it's not just the quantity. It's also the quality. It's the, it's always the quality. It's always the quality. If you want to go and Dr. Howard Ferran, I had a wonderful interview with him and he made a great distinction. When you're competing against big, big practice, like the corporate, you're going to lose on the price, but you can win on value. So if you think you're going to beat, beat, and you're going to be successful on volume, you're not. And you might be making good enough income. You're fine being inefficient. So be it. If you're happy the way you are, don't, you know, that's fine. Um, then you can't change that. But it, you have to be willing to really take a close look, self-analysis, and see, um, and go through the process and audit yourself um, to, to see if you, could, you can improve that. But, you know, don't just go by what you think. Look at the numbers, look at reality, and look at what you're trying to create. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, can you give us like an example of call or examples of calls that just torpedo new patients? Sure. Like, you know, somebody calls in and says, hey, my name is Jonathan Van Horn. I am looking for a new dentist. Hey, guys, sorry for the interruption. Really quick announcement for you. 
And if you're going to be a dental practice owner, you know you're at some point going to have to get a dental practice loan, whether it's going to be to acquire a dental practice or it's going to be to start a startup dental practice. You're going to have to get a loan. And I'm really proud to say that a company that I've worked with personally dozens of times over the past few years is our first sponsor after 80 episodes of Start Your Dental Practice. And our first sponsor is Bank of America Practice Solutions. So whenever you're going to be getting a new loan, whenever you're going to get a loan for starting your dental practice or acquiring a dental practice, you really want to make sure that you have three things when it comes to that loan. Number one, you want a really great interest rate. Number two, you want to make sure that the company that you're speaking with has a, a lot of experience and can guide you through the best path to be able to become a practice owner through the loan process. And number three, you want to make sure that the terms associated with that loan are the most advantageous for you. And I'm really happy to say that all three of these things, Bank of America just knocks it out of the park for you. It's really a no-brainer. If you're going to have to get a loan, which you are going to have to do 100%, you may as well go with a company that has great interest rates, has great experience with the industry, and has the best terms out there in the market today. So if you're currently in the process of shopping loans, 100% give Bank of America Practice Solutions a try. And if you would mention that you came through the SYDP community, it would help out the podcast a lot and also allow us to give back to our very gracious sponsors. Again, this is an advertisement, a paid advertisement. If you go to them, I will uh, you know, have more advertising revenue come to me. So if you enjoy the podcast, I would appreciate you helping out our sponsors. Uh, And if you are interested in that loan process, just text the word bank loan, one word, B-A-N-K-L-O-A-N to 33444. Again, that's bank loan to 33444. And we will reach out to you. Thanks, guys. Okay, so so the big big pitfalls are going to be like, you know, ring. Hey, this is Jonathan. Um, what do you charge for veneers? Response is, well, we charge $1,500 a month. Uh, 1500 a month. We charge $1,500 for each veneer. Um, that doesn't include core buildup or anything like that. Uh, implants, an extra two grand. Oh, let me, let me talk to my spouse and I'll, I'll call you back. Boom. They call him back? Probably, Probably not. not <laughs> um, unless you're the cheapest person in town. And um, if, what, what if I just heard was, $3,500 and I don't know. And there's other stuff that has to be done, but I don't know what those are. <laughs> right. and, and, and basically, uh, if you wanted a quick phone call, you got it. You know, one of the things, the key that I always teach dentists and I do also with all-star is you don't want to become a commodity. Mm-hmm. When you end up pricing yourself out, you're a commodity. You want to become a value, a service. Okay. If people are always looking at price, you're missing the point of what you're doing. Okay. Price is important, but not you're changing lives. You're you're saving lives, okay? Uh, or you're and or you're making people look beautiful, uh, and you're keeping them healthy. So another thing might be they call and they ask, "Are you in network with uh, uh, MetLife or or Blue Cross or whatever it is, um, uh, or Aetna?" And you say, "No, we're not in network." Okay, let me call somebody who is. That's gone. Okay. Then there's, there are situations where, um, and we have a list somewhere of all the different mistakes, but it's giving you some, giving you like a little clipping, you know, there could be a situation where they call and, um, you know, they want to, there's, this is a potential fear patient. And all you're talking about is how much tooth structure you remove when the doctor does the, uh, does veneers or crowns or, or, or whatever that might be, or, or an extraction. And they're like, oh, okay, I got to go. Um, and I think the key in our process, we teach a process called the great call process. The first step is greeting. The second uh, step is rapport. The next step is engaging the patient. Um, then we ask for the appointment a and T we take information. Typically practices may do a greeting. It's not very good or whatever, or might be too short, or too long. Uh, they don't get any much information or they get too much information and they go right to engage, but they never built rapport. They, they didn't, you know, it's like, basically if somebody says, I want to know about all dental Academy, what do you charge? Well, what are they trying to do? They're making me into a commodity into what our service is. It's not a commodity, it's a service. And so I have no idea what they need. So what I do is I say, what do you need? Maybe we're not even a good fit for you. 
you know, I want to learn more about you. What are you struggling with? So once you build rapport, you know, like Heather will spend with the dentist an hour on the phone before even discussing price because it's not the point. What are you looking to do? I'll start. You may need a consultant or coach or you may need somebody else. You might need Jonathan Van Horn, you know, because your books are out of balance and all that stuff and you have no idea. So you, you have to be able to um, understand this rapport is understanding the situation, um, getting you know, it's like uh, Dale Carnegie always says, um, you know, you want to know that repeating their name. And I think it was, uh, was it Stephen Covey, seek first to understand then to be understood, understand people and build rapport. And I think the biggest problem besides the obvious of insurance and price is they're not building rapport. Mm -hmm. And the attitude is like, hello, dental office. Yeah. Uh-huh. What's your number? What's your address? Well, let's make an appointment. Well, I, I'm not ready to make an appointment. You're not? Well, well, can you hold on? You know, I, I'm busy. Or ho ho hold on, I got somebody in front of me. You know, it's, or they're yelling at somebody in the background like, they're not considering this phone call is sacred. Yep. You know? So so I think that's the biggest problem. Like I said, the, the we have the things that are obvious, but the biggest problem of all the middle stuff, the 80%, is they're not building rapport. And they don't give a, you know what? And there's no attention to it. I'm just answering the phone call. I'm checking somebody out. That's all I do. I go home. Mm -hmm. Well, you're missing out on a gold mine. I'm doing my job to the level enough to where I don't get fired. <laughs> right. And that's what the dentist has asked. I want right. you to answer the phone, follow charts, and I'm going to pay you as little as possible. Yeah. And what they feel like is one of those is a known quantity. I have this many charts I need to file. And that phone's going to interrupt me while I'm trying to get that job right. done. Right. And if the doctor isn't going to make phones a priority, you think your team members are going to make it a priority? Uh, no, absolutely not. So very cool. So that that's a really good actionable piece of advice that we just had on, on, on this episode. So tell me now, as far as, because we have a lot of different people in a lot of different um, phases of their practice ownership. Some are in dental school, some are associates, some have just started a practice, some have just bought a practice, some have been you know, in practice for a few years. When is the right time for dental practices to undergo this type of training? I mean, is there is there a, 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 a you know an optimal time for everyone, or is this one of the things like having a kid? Like, there's never the perfect time. It's just always you know just depends on the person. I think um, dentists need to be aware of this, um, even in dental school. I mean, I'm very grateful that Nova Southeastern University, a school nearby me, has invited me to speak a few times there. I'm speaking there later this year um, on the, the Ulster Dental MBA uh, program. Um, so so that's the thing. I think it's important to understand this stuff. Uh, if you, I'll put it this way, if you have the intention of opening your practice one day or being a part owner or being some sort of management facility or managing a dental office, you have to master these skills. If all you're going to be doing is dentist, uh, the art dentistry, you you need to be strike that you you do need to be pretty good if you want to be a good artist and be very good at case acceptance. You have to understand the patient experience. And one of the to be great at case acceptance, you got to you can be, if you got to be great at phone skills. Because if you can be good at split second situations, you can handle case acceptance much better. So I think it applies across the board. It really comes down ultimately to who you are as a person, what standard you want to be, but I'm uh, and what you want to achieve. There are some dentists that are very um, pure artists. They don't. They're not good with people. They never will be. And you're kind of forcing this may not be for you. You're unless you want to change. And if those that don't want to change, don't do it. It's going to be uncomfortable. But if you're willing to take that risk and 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 change a little bit and grow, do it. So that's going to be where it starts. Um, it, in terms of how it relates to All Star, I, I say everybody certainly take advantage of. We have so many, uh, and Jonathan's the same way. We're, we're brothers like this. We give a lot of free stuff. We have webinars every month and study clubs every month that you can join. You can watch free. The replays are for members, but you can watch free. Um, we have uh, on our website. You can opt in for a free ebook. We have free webinars. All this great stuff you can take advantage of. Um, we have programs for associates. We have programs um, for for dentists. And I was telling you earlier in the green room uh, that uh, what's been pleasing to me a lot of dentists. Um, this is a, a big chunk and it's exciting 
are investing in all-star training for themselves and their team up to a year before they open their practice hmm. because they want to make sure they understand it and they're prepared and that when they start bringing people on that they're already trained. So they open the practice, boom. We have one practice that did this. They opened the practice. They, were, they, they, they crushed it with patience. You know, where other practices are worrying, how can I not, how can I get patients on day one? They're training, they're marketing before they open the practice. They have their books in order, Jonathan. They know what they're doing. They have their accounting and business strategy together. That's if you want, and, and, and step back for a second, because I love to compare to other businesses. You might say, oh, Alex, what you're saying is self-serving because, you know, of course you want people to, to use your program whenever. But think about this. If you're any other business or franchisee, you do exactly what I just said. Why is dentistry different? If I'm opening up a a retail store, am I going to wait to train years later? No. I'm going to have training and my protocols before day one. A year beforehand, I'm going to be having that. I'm going to be hiring people and they're going to know exactly what to do. So why is dentistry different? And that's what I'm all about is taking the best of what the Fortune 500 are doing and bring it to the dentistry. Dentistry doesn't have to be behind the times. I get to bring you to, you know, and another dentist, dentist said to me, you know what? Well, at least we're not physicians because our <laughs> service is much better than them. You want to compare yourself to physicians? Why do you, com- don't compare to a lower standard, compare to a higher standard. You know, I asked Dennis, when I speak, what do you want to be like? They're saying, I want to be like Apple, Google, the Ritz-Carlton, Nordstrom's. Good. That's what you compare yourself to. I love the idea of, of implementing a, uh, you know, just a, a culture of professionalism as well as a culture of incremental growth. I mean, I, yeah. I, I tell my employees all the time, like, we're a company that is always going to try and do better. We are always working on our product. We are always working on our service because we always want to give the highest amount of value to the people that are are trusting their money with us to give them a great service. And so, you know, we work really hard at doing that kind of stuff for our clients. And when I talk to, 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 to doctors, a lot of the times they're searching for like a process or something like that. They're searching for, you know, I want to be able to file my insurance claims you know, 5% faster, because if I do that, then I'll make more money. It's like, no, like, we got to come back down. You know, well, yeah, so those processes are obviously important. And, you know, like I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the, or I'm not a huge fan. I'm, I'm a decent fan of that TV show, the, 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 the profit, uh, with, uh, Marcus Lemonis, which he talks about people, processes and product. Yeah. And I tell a lot of people, you know, in service based business where it's person to person, those that people aspect is just it's incredibly so important. So critical. I mean, so and that, that's just missed so often because us is you know especially in in dentistry whenever they the dentist takes so on so much themselves of you know it's they they've got to support their family they got to support their employees right. their employees families the patients the community they they have to service all these other people and they think that it's you know they maybe 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 it's too you know business is too popular right now where everybody just thinks it's just a process it's just you know everyone right. goes through a line or something like that where and and, and you know, you know yeah. i think we're all about systems and processes that's important mm-hmm. um it is important franchises do better than non-franchises you have to have systems sure um but you also want to have strategic systems too not just tactical systems because you're saying like again, I want a crown. I, I want a filling. Well, you need a crown. Well, I just want that. You can't pick and choose. You need to have it all in the right context. The other thing is, you're absolutely right, Jonathan. It's all about service, and we are in service industries. I make it a commitment. You know, I say to people, we open and close enrollment for All Star frequently, because I only allow enough people in that I can physically speak to. That is going to be our growth for for now. You know, it may change in the future, but I love speaking to dentists one on one. And I want quality versus quantity. What's the difference? I mean, I get more satisfaction. People stay, retain, just like you. You take care of them. So I've been making it the CEO. I will call. Our VP of training, my partner, my wife will call and talk. Who does that? Who makes that investment? And same thing with you as a dentist. You think corporate can compete with that? Can compete with you personally, the CEO, the dentist, calling the patient and saying, thank you. 
for being a great patient. I mean, and it's only a few minutes a day of you making a difference to that patient's life. And when you do that, they're going to refer everybody to you. And it feels good. I love calling our clients. How you doing? We have a lot. It's a lot of work, but I love it. And I and, and that that's a connection. And so that's how you separate. That's how you guarantee. Your, that's how you start to create a system and a strategic process and a vision. You know, I asked Dennis, you have a vision? They don't have a vision. A vision of, of what you want to do. It's funny. I was talking to, speaking of vision, I'm going off the topic. Speaking of vision, I was talking to this office, this big office, and they were interviewing us. And I, I got on the phone with them. And they were asking, do you do sales or st- unethical stuff, whatever? Because a lot of companies do that. And I go, do me a favor. I'm not going to even answer that. Go to our website and read the about. Read the vision. So the team member goes there. She was grilling me hard. I said, read our vision. She reads it out loud to like 30 people. And she goes, okay, I got it now. Because we say in our vision, we are dedicated to eliminate sales training and replacing it with Fortune 500 training, making this the standard in dentistry. Not just about us. It's about making a difference. And so the same thing as you as a dentist, make create that as well. We talked about some tactical things, phone skills, the business growth formula, broken appointments, all those things that the tough uh, callers, but then we'll step back and, and, and see what do you want to create? What's your standard? What's your vision? What are you building beyond yourself? And if you are in that space, that go giver space, like Jonathan is and others, you know, you put in that extra mile and taking care of that patient, you, you're, you're in your training, you're almost guaranteeing yourself that safety. Okay. And that growth to have whatever you choose to have. You, listen, you may not become a billion dollar company. Okay. That's a different mechanism, but you'll make millions. And if that's enough for you. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's a big strategic advantage. It's a giant one over, over all, all the negatives that are out there and all the pressures that are out there with all the other businesses that are out there. It's a huge strategic advantage. It's, you know, they talk about blue ocean strategy you know, there's a hundred thousand, some, some odd hundred thousand dental practices out there. And yeah. I guarantee you, you know, what one to 3% focus on this kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that Dennis said to me, well, what if other people use your training? Cause it's working. People are doubling. I just spoke to two or three, they're doubling their new patient loads. They're increasing, um, 33% revenue. It's amazing. Um, what they're doing, but the reality is like you said, Jonathan, no matter how passionate you and I are about our products and what we stand for and our services, very few are still going to do it. You know, I had this, I joke about this. I was speaking at the AACD. It was a great event. A lot of dentists sign up and this one dentist came up to me and he says, Alex, that was a great presentation. I've been following you for years. I love it. And, and, and I know I should sign up and he goes, I'm going to sign up one day. And he walks away. When I'm ready. As soon as I'm he ready. Didn't, he didn't say when I was ready. Right. It, was, it was so cute. He goes, I'm going to sign up one day. You know, even to that point of being so excited. And I had other dentists around there kind of like shaking their head. Like you identify the problem, you know the solution, and you're not taking action. See, I understand there's still a portion that are, don't see the problem, which is why you talk about the problem. They don't, or they don't see the solution. But you have some that see the problem, know the solution, and still don't take action. So the reality is, Jonathan, I know you hate to hear this, but we can't save everybody. There are some that are just not going to cut it because they, they, they are missing. They don't know the problem. They can't see it. They can't see the solution, or they know the problem is the solution, and they won't take action. Or what my dad does, which ticks me off, is he'll pick the wrong people <laughs> For whatever reason, or he gets desperate, and now you know. Fortunately, I'm a lawyer; I can bail him out of problems. But <laughs> you know, dentists get themselves into problems. Not that they're in trouble with the law, but they get taken advantage of because they're they're not making, you know. So, guys and ga- gals, ladies and gentlemen, follow your heart. You know, in your heart, you know, in your gut, the right decision, and do it. Warren Buffett makes decisions by his gut not just the numbers. He's got a Jonathan Van Horn crunching the numbers for him, but he makes the decision based on, you know what? I feel right about this. He's the richest man in the world, maybe, you know, depending on the day. (laughs) 
but he still lives in a modest home and he's given away most of his fortune. So it's not even the money that's important. It's also lifestyle. It's also enjoying yourself and feeling good about what you do. So awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming on today. Uh, if anyone has any other questions or wants to look more into all star dental, what is the way for them to be able to, uh, to, to find out more about the company, you, sure. et cetera. Um, certainly go to our website, allstardentalacademy.com. If you go to All Star Academy, you end up with a cooking show. Um, <laughs> so make sure you go to allstardentalacademy.com. And we have an opt-in right there, get my free book, um, or you can opt in for um, a free webinar uh, as well. And once you get on our, our sequence, you get some wonderful experts. Like I said, I had Jonathan, uh, was it this month or last month I had you? It was uh, this month. It was uh, a couple month. weeks ago, I think. So you have great experts like Jonathan and others you get to hear from and uh, and so on. So we do all that stuff for free. So Awesome. Thank you again so much for coming on, guys. Thanks for listening today. And reach out to Alex. He's been gracious enough to give us an hour of his time. And as we all know, time's the one thing we don't get more of. So we appreciate him giving us an hour of his today. So thanks again, Alex. My appreciate pleasure. Appreciate being a Guys, cool. have a good one. What's up guys? Are you one of the many docs out there that know that there's just a ton of content and information out there that is designed to help you become a better business owner, but you don't know where to look or to spend your time, what to read, what to listen to, what to ingest of what to be able to take in to educate yourselves to be a better business owner? You're not alone. I get this comment or this question almost every day from listeners of the podcast, as well as other dentists that I speak to every day. So what I've done to be able to combat that is I've gathered up my four most favorite books to give to you guys so that you can learn about business. Now, these are business books that are specifically designed to teach you about the different core concepts and skills you need to be a better business owner. And I'm actually going to be giving away a set of these four books every single month to start your dental practice podcast listeners. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so in order to find out what these four books are, as well as to enter yourself into the contest to receive a free copy of these books, all you got to do is text the word four books. That is F O U R B O O K S one word, no space F O U R B O O K S. And I will send you an email about what the four books are, my suggestions, why I think they're so great for you to be able to listen to, and you'll also be entered into the contest. And don't worry, if you already have the books, if you already read them, then you'll still be entered into the contest, and you just let me know, and I'll just give you an Amazon gift card instead of sending you the books. So, guys, this is my way to thank you guys for being listeners of the podcast. I hope that you'll text the word four books, F-O-U-R-B-O-O-K-S to 33444. Again, that's 33444. And you'll be able to save a bunch of time on finding out what books you need to be reading. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant that will help you start your very own dental practice.